One stat before we go. Venezuela was very crime-ridden. They announced the other day 72 percent reduction in crime in the last year. You know why? They moved all their criminals from Venezuela right into the good old USA. And Biden let them do it. It's a disgrace. But, sir, where are those numbers coming from? Uh, I guess I get them from the papers in this case. I think it's a federal statement or, well, they're coming actually from Venezuela. They're coming from Venezuela. We'll have to check on that. Whoops. Donald Trump's handler should have probably warned this local Detroit Fox anchor of the cardinal rule for any Republican on television these days. No follow-up questions. Because that right there is a surefire way to make sure that Donald Trump never comes back on this show. Here, Trump is claiming that Venezuela has virtually eliminated crime because Biden apparently recruited all of the Venezuelan criminals over here to the United States. And when he was called out on this ridiculous assertion, Trump gave three answers as to where he got this information. The first was the paper, for which there is zero record of any claims that 72% of Venezuelan criminals have migrated to the US. Then he claims that it was a federal statement, which to be clear, doesn't actually mean anything. Saying something that sounds quasi-official like a federal statement doesn't actually make it true. Also worth noting that any official documents that would go to the president would go to Joe Biden, what with him actually being the president, while Trump cosplays as one because he isn't able to get over the fact that he's a loser. And finally, what he settled on with his answer is that he got the information straight from Venezuela. Hear that? Venezuela called Donald Trump and gave him this incredible stat. And to that I say this, if Donald Trump really did hear this stat from Venezuela, he didn't considering he pulled this stat out of his ass, but humor me for a second, then do you really want a president in office who blindly believes the nonsense fed to him by other countries? Wouldn't Trump believing and regurgitating blatant misinformation from a foreign country be exactly a reason why not to elect him as president? Because we don't want a president too stupid not to be able to discern fact from fiction? Kind of reminds me of this moment right here when Trump wanted to join forces to form a cybersecurity unit with the exact country that committed cyber warfare against us. Quote, Putin and I discuss forming an impenetrable cybersecurity unit so that election hacking and many other negative things will be guarded. Yeah, brilliant idea. What's next? An animal welfare group headed up by Kristi Noem? Of course, not only can't Trump discern fact from fiction, he himself is the country's biggest purveyor of misinformation and disinformation. The reality is that Trump concocted this entire crime statistic out of whole cloth because A, he is a shameless liar who will say or do anything to win, and B, he believes that his supporters are stupid. Donald Trump has so much contempt for the people who trust him that he will lie to their faces every chance he can get. Imagine if someone did that to you in real life. Imagine if a spouse or a friend stood there and openly manipulated you for their own personal gain. Would you reward that person with money or time or favors? Probably not. So why would his supporters do those things when he's doing the exact same thing to them? And yet, Trump has been reduced to this kind of hysterical ranting and lying as his poll numbers continue to dip against Joe Biden and as more and more Americans actually learn about his positions. Watch this clip of Donald Trump discussing the overturning of Roe, for example, and tell me that this isn't Trump losing his mind. Everybody wanted this to be done. Every legal scholar wanted this to be done. Most Democrats wanted it. Liberals wanted it. This was a while ago. Then they changed their mind. They viewed it as a political, uh, political deal. Right. Liberals out here just begging for Roe to be overturned. Okay, Grandpa time for bed. And so clearly, the guy is becoming desperate. He knows that his positions are untenable, and so he's trying to manifest this parallel reality where somehow everything he does is popular and everybody wanted it, and also that he's done nothing wrong. Not only is it nakedly false, but it's actually pretty pathetic, which is especially dangerous territory for Trump. Why? Because his strength is derived from this notion that he's tough and strong. And yet now, he's been reduced to these desperate defensive statements spewing lies so obvious they would make even his own supporters cringe. I'm pretty sure even the most deluded Trump supporter isn't going to believe that liberals were desperate for Roe to be overturned. And so while this guy tries to present himself as a strong man, in actuality, this is who he is. Really quickly, if I can, Lisa, your observations on Donald Trump today. Sleeping. Again, sleeping. You know, they have tried a number of different devices. Yeah, uh, sleeping for a lot of it. Um, I would say they've tried a number of different devices to keep Trump awake. 
partially in response or what appears to be in response to collective press corps observations. So, for example, when there are sidebars, an attorney doesn't leave his side anymore because leaving him alone means leaving him to potentially sleep. He has a stack of papers with him at all times now to go through. But neither of those things seem to have protected Trump from his own exhaustion today more than, you know, more than not, when I looked up to see how Trump was receiving the testimony, Trump was not receiving it at all because his eyes were closed. Just a tired old man who can't even stay awake for his own criminal prosecution. But sure, real tough guy. Got it. And one last note. For reporters who find themselves in a position where they are interviewing Donald Trump, do what this Fox anchor did here and ask a follow-up question. Donald Trump will flounder like a fish out of water every single time. Need proof? Here you go. Take a look at some of these charts. I'd okay? love to. We're going to look. Let's look. And if you look at death, yeah, her, it's started to go up again. One. Well, right here, the United States is lowest in numerous categories. Uh, we're lower than the world. Lower than we're the lower world. than what is that? Europe. Take in what? Look. In what? Take a look. Right here. Here's case death. Oh, you're doing death as a proportion of cases. I'm talking about death as a proportion of population. That's where the US is really bad. Well, well, Much worse than South Korea, Germany, etc. You can't you can't do that. You have Why to go, can't I do that? You have to go by you have to go by where look, here is the United States. You have to go by the cases. The cases Why are not there. as a proportion when of population? We have somebody, what it says is when you have somebody that yeah. has it, where there's a case, oh, okay. the people that live sure. from oh. those cases. It's surely a relevant statistic to say if the US has X population and X percentage of death of that population no, versus South Korea. No, because you have to go by the cases. Well, look at South Korea, if, for example. 51 million population, 300 deaths. It's like, it's you, crazy you compared to other that. Things. I do. It's you on the, don't know that. Don't, you think they're faking their statistics? Uh, South Korea? I, I an advanced won't get into country? that because they have a very good relationship yeah. with the country. But you don't know that. And they have spikes. Look, here's Germany, one. Germany, low, 9,000. Here's one right here. United States. You take anyway. the number of cases. Okay. Now look, we're last. Meaning we're first. Last? I don't know we what we're first best. in. As a well, take a look. Okay. Again, it's I'll cases. Just, okay. Um, and we have cases. Because I mean, of the a thousand Americans are dying a day, but I understand. I understand on cases, it's different. No, but you're not reporting it correctly, Jonathan. I think I am, but... If you take a look at this other chart, okay. look, this is our testing, I believe. This is the testing, yeah. Yeah, we do more tests. No, wait a minute. Well, don't we get credit for that? And because we do more tests, we have more cases. In other words, we test more, we have... But, now, take a look. The top one, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. But the top, Jonathan. If, 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 if hospital rates were going down and deaths were going down, I'd say terrific. You deserve to be praised for well, testing, they but even, they're all going you know, up. They very rarely 60,000 Americans are in hospital. If you watch the news or dying or read the papers, they usually talk about new cases, new cases, new cases. I'm talking about death. Well, you look it's at death. Up. Death is way down from where it was. It's, it's a thousand death. a day. It was two and a half thousand. It went down to 500. Now it's going up death. again. Excuse me. Where it was is much higher than where it is right now. It went down and it, it went spiked, up again. But now it's going down again. It's, it's going, going down in Arizona. It's going down in Florida. Nationally it's going, going down in Texas. Take a look at this. These are the tests. It's going down in Florida? Yeah, it's going. It leveled out and it's going down. That's my report as of yesterday. The only way this guy is able to succeed if he's able to spew lies uninhibited by any other human being offering even an ounce of pushback. And interviews like these only serve as proof of exactly that. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish-speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.